fucking button. And can you see my face? I can see her. Okay. Um, pardon me. Uh, okay. Can you remind us what the question was that I just asked you? Um, you told me it's something we don't, don't want to speak about for a while. Uh, yeah. But do you remember the question? Uh, no. I, I, I don't have okay, to so lie. I don't have to lie. The question was, if you weren't called Walter, what would you want to be called? Wally. Oh, I wasn't supposed to answer right We're away. not talking about it. And called, uh, what happens when you can't, uh, when I mean, you're kind of like really smart but stupid? It was a crazy house because we did, had a phone that actually, there was something with a telephone company, but it like was connected by mistake to another house. So we would receive their phone calls. And we had recently had a guy die in the house, that dead Mark. Uh, it wasn't from us, it was, you know, things. Uh, but it, I guess it was because he had disconnected his phone, but somehow his phone connected to some, another house. So we, we would receive the phone calls of this house, and we didn't know who they were, and that house could talk to us. So I remember a phone call, and someone says it is uh, Lewis, I don't remember the guy's name, it was a woman who called, and I said, Lewis is busy. You know, I mean, she was calling Lewis's house, but it was our house in Westwood, and, you know, but I was being a wise guy, so I said, Lewis is busy. And apparently this woman who called was his girlfriend, so uh, she's like, what do you mean he's busy? Who's he with? I'm like, oh, no, he's not with anyone. And she starts getting hysterical about Lewis. And, and, and he, she thinks he's cheating on her. And, and here I am. And she, it's a phone uh, screw up. You know, but I'm already, I'm already in the role. I'm already there. You know, I have to take control of Lewis and his, his girlfriend was angry. And, I, and I'm like, Lewis is here. And I don't know, she hung up. Oh, that was dead Mark. Uh, I mean, his name became dead Mark. Like, I was asked who died in the house, and it was Denmark. He was a good guy. He, uh, he, and the thing is, is I moved into the house. You know, my brother lived there, and it was great. So I, and I'm from Brooklyn, so I wanted to live in Brooklyn and New York. I joined a band and stuff like that. So, but I moved into the house, uh, Mark. At that time, he was not dead Mark, he was alive Mark, but he uh, saw me move in, I'm a nice guy, my brother travels a lot, so I took over my brother's room, uh, but he didn't know that a band would move in, so that was a problem, because, you know, no one told him, uh, and he was a nice guy, but so we set up in the living room and we're playing music and the benefit was uh, because there was an issue because suddenly you know someone moves in with a band uh, and nothing was mentioned so i said to mark okay when do you want us to be silent and mark had a favorite show and i'm not saying it was bonanza but was something like that so as long as we were quiet during the show, um, that consideration of the band, he didn't care. You know, we showed uh, Mark, uh, you know, band considerations, you know, but uh, then it became dead Mark. Uh, uh, and even history, History um, 
because I, I know the truth about history. I mean, I, I know, you know, who was it? The guy who, uh, he rode a horse from New York to Boston, uh, Revolutionary War. I mean, um, are you talking uh, about Paul Revere? Paul Revere, Paul Revere, okay. That's Francis, the interviewer. He's good, he knows facts, 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 facts. But Paul Revere only rode at mile and a half. Okay, that's the fact. And then the other dude carried the rest of the way to Boston. Actually, he actually, did, actually there, was a, there was a woman, there was a young woman who- It, it was a woman who carried it. There was a young woman who, who did like a much larger the, run than he, did, than he did. Okay, so a woman actually did like a young, like a young person. woman did the work because it's a lot. So he just did the publicity stunt, Paul Revere. Okay, one, okay, Paul Revere. So he, he rides a mile and that's it. And then the woman takes over and boom, uh, does the work. Also, he was only brought in because of his name. His name was Paul Revere. Fucking good name. It's a great name. You know, and it did lead to music and stuff like that, but it was a great name because there was a guy who was originally supposed to do it. I think it was Jim Oglethorpe, and you know, it just that's just the way it works. So, uh, I I'm a professor. Fucking button. You said the last time. I said, so I said the last time. Francis I said the last time. He said the last time. Oh, oh, oh I'm sorry. I said, what, no, I said, what do you miss from 25 years ago? Oh, what do I miss what from 25 years ago? What do you miss? Miss from the, the muggings. On the subway. All right, okay. Uh, I miss the muggings because now, well, okay. I, well, I miss, you know, the music and stuff like that, but I'm saying the, there's not the excitement. I have been uh, kidnapped, and this is my speaking to America. What do you miss about the subway from 25 years ago? What do I miss, Francis asked, from the subway from 25 years ago? Um, on the muggings. I mean, it was always a thrill, you know, to chase a mugger. You know, like around lunchtime, well, this was actually above ground, then they go into the subways, but around lunchtime they would grab chains, people's walls. This is 25 years ago, like the 90s, or whenever the hell it was, 80s, you know what I mean? But what was good is you'd see them grab it, and then you'd chase them, because it's like noon, one o'clock. <clears throat> they grab the chain because everyone's eating lunch, so no one's gonna run after them. But it's a great workout. It's the most best workout you can have, because. You're exhilarated, the crowds are going nuts, you know, they, it's like, a, you know, they point in the directions of where the dude's going, you know, you run through parking lots, a couple blocks, and eventually you lose them, you know, but the dude earned it, so, but, and then sometimes they come into the subway, so you're chasing them, uh, again, it's usually around noon or one o'clock, 42nd Street, 34th Street, Midtown, but then again, 30 years ago, when people had lunch around that area, because they wanted to hit you after you hit the uh, machines, your money machines and had lunch, you're fat and just walking around. So they grab your chains, they grab your wall, boom. But I one time had a guy run into the subway, so I'm chasing him and then, you know, I, I give up, I don't care. Uh, but then he turns around and I flip him into a wall because he ran to police. So that was exciting. We're chasing a guy into an abandoned building, but then, People walk around and you want, you know, oh, so it's confusing. Or getting uh, mugged on the, oh, attendant muggings. There are always attendant muggings. I once had a dude uh, come up to me, he wanted me to give him his, my jacket and sit down. I'm like, I'm not into it today. And we're going back and forth. I was just I'm like, I don't want to do it. So, you know, and that, so that was an issue, but uh, yeah, he ended up, uh, not doing anything so or a guy hit me on the brooklyn bridge and says give me your wallet i say i'm not into it today i mean you know boom and you walk away and they don't know what to do or i go into a midtown mcdonald's and sit down fucking button